Two presents Hancock and Kelly. Good Sunday morning to you. Welcome to Hancock and Kelly on Fox 2, where we take on the top issues of the week. On the right, John Hancock. Yeah, with an extra hour of sleep. Let's go. <laughs> on the left is Michael Kelly. Well done, everybody. Saving that time. Yeah, welcome to uh, Fall Back. Hope you banked your hour. I'm Andy Banker. On the agenda this morning, St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell drops his bid for the United States Senate to run for the House against Democrat Congresswoman Cori Bush. City SC fans stay in a hotel near the stadium after the team's playoff game last Sunday. They wake up with bullet holes in their room and bullet fragments in their bed. Is Congress playing games with aid to Israel in our allies' hour of need? And in our quote of the week, the RFK Jr. factor. Yeah, remember him? His third-party presidential run may hurt Donald Trump more than Joe Biden. Also, Democrats accused of fueling anti-Semitism. President Biden goes to Maine. And should Donald Trump's name be scrubbed from the 2024 election ballot under the 14th Amendment? We'll get to all of that, but we begin with St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell, a Democrat, his election stunner. He drops out of the U.S. Senate race to run against fellow Democrat in the House, Congresswoman Cori Bush. Well, this is nothing personal against the Congress, against the Congresswoman. He says he's got nothing against the congresswoman. He's just doing this. He seemed to have little hope of winning the Democrat nomination in the Senate race. But he says he's switching races because fellow Democrats have been urging him to run against Bush as he, campaign, as he campaigned for the Senate around the state. Bush is vulnerable. Her campaign is in debt with little cash on hand. What do you think of Bell's chances here, John? I think it's an uphill uh, slog for him. I didn't realize he was running for the U.S. Senate. <laughs> I mean, uh, so here's the, here's the situation. It's a presidential year. In August, you're going to have Republican primaries for governor and attorney general, very high profile. And that means you're not going to have a lot of crossover votes from Republicans in the Democrat primary. That's problem one for Wesley Bell. Problem two for Wesley Bell is that his constituency, the progressive constituency with which he won the prosecutor's race against Bob McCullough, is exactly the same constituency that Cori Bush has cultivated. Cori Bush is the real progressive in this race, and Wesley Bell is progressive light. I think it's going to be very hard for him to win in a Democratic primary. You mentioned, though, the, the primary, right? That's when this race is going to be decided, in August and not November. But will there be a Republican presidential primary? Do no, we not in August. Have one? Uh, right, so this is sort of standalone. Well, but you've you got to pick a ballot in August. So, and the Republicans are going to have a governor and attorney general spending a lot of money in the primary, so Republican voters are mu much more likely to stay home. Now, when I talked to him about this, he said something like, you know, I'm in this for good, because, you know, I, <laughs> when I make up my mind, I stick to things. But he didn't stick to yeah. the Senate race. He switched. Is this political opportunism, and does that hurt him? Well, I think it's a combination of all that. First of all, John's assessment is right. I think this is an uphill battle for uh, Wesley Bell, but it's doable. It's doable if people actually go out and participate in the primary. History has shown us that people, particularly in a presidential cycle, um, and especially in the first congressional district, only really come out for the presidential election. It's going to be important that they come out and participate uh, to, if they want to see Cory Bush go, to be moved out. Now, the first CD is probably the least likely to have a lot of Republicans in right. it. So while John makes that point, I don't know that it's that big of a deal. Finally, Wesley Bell's going to have to actually run a campaign. He was running for the United States Senate, and he was Casper the Ghost. Nobody saw him anywhere. So it's going to be important that he actually gets out there, does the shoe leather, and shows people that there's an alternative to this insanity that is Cory Bush. Here's what about the funding? Well, he'll have funding. He'll have more he'll money. Have he really funding. doesn't. Uh, no, but she'll she'll get her funding. Now, if you if you're serious about beating Cory Bush, in my opinion, the way to do it is to find a credible Democrat uh, and run him or her as an independent in November because the Republicans are not going to have a strong candidate in the first congressional district. If you've got a well-funded independent candidate in a presidential cycle where you maximize the size of the electorate, then all of a sudden the influence of Bush's core base gets minimized because of the sheer volume of voters. If you want to beat Cori Bush, I think you take her out in November. Well, Israel's a big issue in that race. It's taken nearly a month, but fellow Democrats are now coming out publicly against Cori Bush and others like her in Congress for fueling anti-Semitism. 
Well, she has come out against the October 7th Hamas terror attacks in Israel. She continues to accuse Israel of genocide and ethnic cleansing and its response against Hamas in Gaza. And this is in Washington, D.C. yesterday, a pro-Palestinian protest or demonstration. Anti-Semitism is reaching frightening levels. I'm not suggesting that this is an anti-Semitism rally. Uh, but this sort of thing has been accused or been alleged to have been contributing to the rise in anti-Semitism around the United States. From college campuses here to Russia, where a mob rushed an airport looking to confront Jewish passengers arriving by plane. Michael, Democrats, including the president, face criticism for not being forceful enough in denouncing Hamas and de denouncing the terror and always seeming to couch references to Israel with concerns about Palestinians in Gaza, which absolutely well, is legitimate. 9,000 have died there. It's a hard case to make that Joe Biden hasn't been doing everything possible to help Israel. Um, he has been the staunchest ally. He's been leading, particularly when he's got a party full of Cory Bushes out there that are out there saying some ridiculous stuff. There's no doubt about it. People are dying in Hamas. But this war was star in, uh, in Gaza. Gaza. But this war was started by Hamas, and the Israelis have every right and moral authority to be able to go ahead and finish this war. The political consequences could be serious here, not only for President Biden, but for folks down the ballot. But I think President Biden's doing what's right, and that's standing by our ally. And, you know, the consequences that may come as a result of that, I think he's okay with it. How do you see it? Well, if Israel... the Democrats have something to answer for here, are they actually contributing to anti-Semitism? Well, sure. And they're on the wrong side of this thing. If Israel doesn't defend itself, Israel doesn't exist. And it's that simple. They're not surrounded by folks that are afraid of them. They're surrounded by folks that want to eliminate them and wipe them off the face of the globe. Why, though, do we see these massive protests in the West? And I'll tell you what I think. In, in this country particularly, we've spent in our education system now a generation teaching kids that the United States is an illegitimate country, that we came in here, committed genocide, we're not, we're not the moral country, and, and we believe Israel, and a lot of those people believe Israel's founding is exactly the same. And I think when we stop teaching about the fact that the United States is the most exceptional nation in the world, that we provide greater peace, greater stability, greater assistance than any other nation in the history of mankind, we're not perfect, but we are the strongest country and the best hope for this world's stability. But I think the premise that all Democrats is a false premise. It this is. is not all Democrats. No, Look, not. Joe Biden is leading. Uh, it would be the same premise would be saying that all Republicans support Vladimir Putin. No, it seems to be this MAGA and progressive movements on both sides that, that have these positions that just make no sense. But I hope we wake up to what's going on in academia, because it's a problem. But can't you be concerned about yes. innocent Palestinians sure. dying and not be anti-Semitic, right? There's Yeah, but I, I think people exclusive. are expressing that. But the idea that Israel is supposed to lay down, and if you don't, uh, that you're, you're violating some moral code, do we all forget what happened a month ago to these poor people? Right, and Cori Bush is saying it's ethnic cleansing on Israel. Yeah. Hamas party. came in to Israel That's specifically, why primary, I think. specifically to terrorize, to kill children, the elderly, women, and take civilian hostages. That was the, I, that was the mission. The mission for Israel is to root out Hamas. Are civilians going to die in that process? They and, are. And, war, and, war stinks. And what you, you mentioned Cory Bush getting primary. Yes, this may be the straw that broke the camel's back, but this is a lady who constantly votes against her own party, whether it be the infrastructure bill, whether it be against Boeing, whether it be in Israel. I think this is a combination of everything, and a lot of these progressive donors who live out there in St. Louis County who were funding these pie-in-the-sky ideas are waking up saying, wow, I paid for this? Pie-in-the-sky is my word. <laughs> Missouri Republican Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft, who's running for governor, is racking up losses in court over abortion. A Missouri appeals court ruled that Ashcroft is essentially rigging ballot measures on abortion to keep abortion illegal in Missouri. Abortion rights supporters want Missouri voters to decide whether to legalize abortion in the November 24 election. As Secretary of State, Ashcroft, Ashcroft oversees elections. The court took issue with his proposed ballot summaries, which say... That passage would, quote, nullify long-standing Missouri law protecting the right to life, including but not limited to partial birth abortion, unquote. John, the court ruled that the words right to life, partial birth abortion are politically charged and really have no place on a ballot. 
Well, I think the bigger issue per potentially for, for Ashcroft here is the use of the word dangerous, as, as where he refers to dangerous procedures, uh, because that adjective is pejorative. It's a, you know, when, when he says unregulated, I think that's appropriate, because if these are not regulated, when he says unlicensed, if that's, that's appropriate, if they are in fact unlicensed. So uh, he, his case, I think, was hurt by the use of the word dangerous, in my opinion. Now, he says he's going to appeal it to the Supreme yeah. Court. Is this just a stall tactic to maybe keep this issue off the 24 ballot, to keep it from drawing more Democrat voters? Or no, I don't think it voters? has anything to do with what's going to be on the ballot. It has to do with the fact that uh, Ashcroft is running right. for governor and he wants to show Republicans he's out there. There's two other problems here. The Secretary of State's job is largely ministerial. I mean, it's supposed to be the guy who calls balls and strikes. Uh, and that's the way that they were, uh, that he campaigned, seeing that's what he wants to do. He's showing us on a daily basis, number one, how out of touch he is with regular Missourians. And number two, he doesn't want the will of the people to stand. He's pushing an extremist political agenda. Nearly nine months have passed since a teenager lost her legs after being hit by a reckless driver in downtown St. Louis, and still the violent mayhem continues. A couple staying in a hotel near the new downtown soccer stadium after going to the City SC playoff game woke up to find that bullet fragment in their bed and a bullet hole in their window and in the wall right above them. It came through their ninth floor window. They called 911 after police failed to show up for 90 minutes. They called again. A dispatcher said the department was short of available officers. Now, the next day, a car hit a 71-year-old man crossing the street in front of Crown Candy. Michael, it was February when Janae Edmondson, the volleyball player from Tennessee, in town for a volleyball tournament, was hit walking downtown and lost her legs. Now it's November, 10 months later, or uh, 10 months ago in January, Tashar Jones hired new police chief Robert Pl Tracy for $275,000 a year. How do you think this is all working out so far? I got to tell you, it's been so long since we've seen the police chief and the mayor that I've forgotten what they look like. You would think this type of an event happening under this crown jewel that we now have in downtown, our soccer, soccer team, would, would cause people to want to see leadership Unfortunately, the police department, which is right across the street from this hotel, and the mayor continue to remain silent. We have got an extreme crisis in the city of St. Louis, and the way that our leadership is dealing with it is to pull the covers over their head. It doesn't even seem to be much of a blip in terms of the well, beyond here, a little news coverage. And, and here's the ultimate problem. We hear about the shooting. We hear about the guy getting run over in front of Crown Candy. You know what we don't hear about? The arrest of the suspects. And are there not cameras? Do we not have, I mean, I know the, I know the car guy uh, in Crown Candy was caught on tape. Uh, I have to imagine the Pear Tree Inn has cameras. Why aren't we catching these felons and putting them in jail? That's the thing that is very disturbing to me. Up next, House Republicans accused of playing politics with emergency aid for Israel, and President Biden goes to Maine after another mass shooting by a person with mental issues and with a legal masked can't mass casualty rifle.